he is a very successful screenwriter and director. He's the go-to guy for actor showreels and he's written and directed his own original short films. He's also a massive Spurs fan. It's Daniel Johnson. So Dan, without stating the obvious, we are in a pandemic at the moment. You are in the arts industry. So how have you found it during the lockdown and during this time now? I panicked fully for a about a week and a half and then realised that wasn't going to help me, that wasn't <laughs> going to be productive. Um, and then weirdly after that, I, I've been all right. You know, I kind of just tried to connect with people, tried to do online projects. And from that, a few work opportunities came up. I did a project with a drama school and a project with a, a NGO in Rwanda, like a completely sort of random project to pick up. So I, I did all right. You know, it was kind of... Uh, had enough stuff to sort of keep yeah. me ticking by, you know. Well, it sounds like you kept yeah. yourself busy. Yeah. And when I guess you have that creative flair about you, you want to keep going with it. Yeah, it's kind of partly creative flair maybe, but it's also just uh, the need to be productive or to not feel like I'm never going to work again, which I think everyone felt a bit at the beginning of the pandemic, you know. So it's just me just trying to find ways to keep my brain going, yeah. Definitely. So we mentioned before that you're a screenwriter. What inspires you when you're writing? Um, good question. It really varies, you know, like sometimes um, inspiration can come from some idea in my head or something that I heard or saw that seems inspiring. Other times there's no inspiration, but there's a need in my head to just start writing. And the inspiration comes because I've sort of told myself, you have to do some work, you know, so it's... Um, I guess like most sort of people that do some sort of creative work, it, you're sort of desperately searching everywhere and anywhere. So it's really hard to answer. It comes from everything and nothing. Yeah. Do you feel pressure when you're writing things? Yeah, I do. I, um, it's that inner voice in your head that kind of, I don't know if it's the inner critic or this inner thing about always wanting to be productive. So sometimes there is a pressure, but obviously the key to creativity is to, I think, to somehow try and switch that off. So it's like a constant, constant battle in my head, you know. I see. So yeah. let's tie that in with football. Sure. If you could write Tottenham season, yeah. what would it look like? I, as much as I like to do original work, I feel like Tottenham have a very specific storyline that we love to live out. So I would just write the Tottenham story, which is <laughs> beginning of the season, we have a hero, we have Harry Kane, Gareth Bale, Jurgen Klinsmann, Teddy, whoever it might be, there's a hero, he's, we're going to win everything, we're going to win trophies and it's all going perfectly, we're like one of the best teams, we're flying, we're top of the league, second of the league, something, we're in a cup quarter final and then something tragic out of their control happens, a referee's bad decision, the goalkeeper <laughs> gets sent off in the fourth minute, Suzuko gives away a penalty <laughs> and it all falls apart and then we foul miserably but we kind of believe... It all meant something and next year's going to be better, you know. I like that. That is the story you sign up for as a Tottenham yeah. fan. So uh, I would just write the write our story, yeah. So you're going with a realistic storyline? Well, it's, um, I'm, I'm so conditioned by it as a Spurs. There's been very few moments of real success that um, you kind of cling to the story. Like when we signed Gareth Bow recently, and until the signing was announced, all the Spurs fans on Twitter and Instagram were all like, it's not happening, it's not, it's falling apart, he's gone to Man United, it's not happening. Um, we're just, we always feel destined for something to slip up, you know. Well, you got him, so. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Proved a lot of people wrong, I guess. Yes, yeah. So, looking at Spurs, they obviously made the documentary on uh, Amazon. Mm. What did you think to the documentary? It was... Good. It was interesting because obviously as a football fan, well, first of all, I loved like the Man City one a few years ago and like the Sunderland one that was on Netflix. So it's it was interesting and it was insightful, but if anything, it didn't feel like it went deep enough. Do you know what I mean? There was a few little arguments like Danny Rose and mm. Deli Alley, a bit of sort of um, niggly conversation. But there wasn't, you know, we didn't see the Pochettino sacking. We didn't see the real harsh conversations with the chairman and the manager and... As much as they say it's all access, it's a Premier League club, they're a huge brand. Are they going to let, is it really going to be all access? You know, so I'd imagine the club have some 
creative control. Yeah. Um, which is probably a good thing from a PR standpoint, but it's frustrating as a fan because you want to see the punch-ups and the arguments, <laughs> you know. So there was a lot missed out. But it was still, it was great. It was great as a fan to see. You almost yeah. want to set up cameras and them not know about it so you get a Absolutely. real feel there for was, it. I don't know if you ever saw, there was the four-year plan, a QPR documentary years ago. Um, oh, yeah. And it was like this new ownership came in and they thought QPR are going to be a Champions League team and they... In this one-year documentary, they signed and all these players and they had about five managers and it was a complete car crash. But it was a bit like the Sunderland documentary. Yeah. It was just kind of riveting yeah, because it was true and it was real. Very so, gritty, yeah. Yeah, and the, the Spurs one was a bit glossy, but it was, yeah, it was fine. But I wanted more. Maybe the second season if there is one. Well, maybe they should be. hire you to do it. They, they should. I'd rather not do Spurs, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'd rather film someone like, I don't know, Charlton or, you know, West Ham, Chelsea, someone that I don't really uh, have an affection for. Well, <laughs> we'll keep our eyes peeled yeah. for that then. So going back to that documentary, obviously we saw bits of Mourinho, maybe you would have liked to have seen more, mm. but what are your thoughts on him in general? I, it's really funny, like when we signed, uh, when Mourinho signed as manager, all my friends were like, this is all for Mourinho. Uh, he's going to kill the club. He's going to ruin them within three years, everyone, blah, blah, blah. But I was just excited because I'm so sort of fed up with that story that I mentioned of the same season that almost, and I'm like, let, if he's a winner, even if by the end of it, everyone's left Spurs, the stadium's fallen down, whatever, like if we can just get a trophy, and by that I mean Carabao Cup, anything, like just give us something, um, so I'm on board. I, I love it. Like I, on in the documentary, all or nothing. Just seeing him with that bit of attitude and telling them, so I think the polite version of what he said to be, you know, to be a bit more forceful in what they're doing. It was refreshing because I feel like Pochettino was a lot more sort of loving and friendly with his players. So it's good to just see him getting stuck in. So I'm a fan right now. But if we do this again in a year, <laughs> we'll see. Who knows if it will stick? But I'm being positive. Yeah. Right, we'll definitely catch up with you yeah, in a year then yeah. and we will have the same yeah, chat. Yeah. If you could write a screenplay about any footballer, mm. who would it be about? Good question. The obvious one that comes to mind is Gaza. I think I was, when Spurs, one of the few times he won a trophy in my lifetime, he won the FA Cup in 1991, I was seven or eight, something like that, and it was Lineker and Gaza and it was... You know, Gaza scored, for Spurs fans, one of the classic goals was the semi-final against Arsenal, his free kick from miles out. Then in the final, again, a very Spursy sort of thing to do. He goes and breaks his leg in the 16th <laughs> minute, gets stretched, get carried away, and then he's already signed for Lazio, so he's never going to play for us again. Then he's out, he leaves Spurs, he's out for a year. Um, he's never quite the same. There's all these stories of the, the alcohol and the nights out. And even his life since, it's quite tragic. And there seems to, whenever I see interviews with him, it's just kind of um, depressing, but gripping. And he's just such a fascinating character. Yeah. Um, I'd want to do it justice. I feel like it's someone you'd have to just do a lot of research on and interview him and really sort of get into the meat of what's in his head. But that's the one that jumps out to me as there must be a great movie there or... 20 part Netflix series or something. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, I think, uh, and he's loved. I think Gazza is just one of those people who people root for and just find him interesting. I was, I went, when they opened the new stadium, they did a Legends sort of game before the real team played. And Gazza was on the subs bench and he came on, but he'd done his Achilles just before. And he came on and he was hobbling and he couldn't even kick a ball. Oh. But the reception from the crowd and the, Everyone was just crying. It was just this real emotion that you don't get from many people. Long-winded answer, but yeah, Gazza, yeah. I think it would be very interesting. Yeah. No, I, I enjoyed that answer. And cool. he's okay. certainly someone that's made an impact on the game. For sure. Um, for sure. And in his personal life as well. It would definitely be a journey. Absolutely. That's for yeah. sure. Lots of content there. Yeah. What do you think to Bale rejoining Tottenham and what kind of impact do you think he'll have on the team? Again, like it's... Great, it's Gareth Bale. He was obviously he left when he left us. He was in his early twen early twenties. He was perceived as one of the everyone was saying like it's Ronaldo, Messi, and then Bale. Looking back, I don't know if he was ever really 
that level, but he, you know, he's won, you know, all these, maybe he was, he's won the Champions League a bunch of times, the league, however many times it is. Like, he is a top player. Spurs, I think, can't really attract those kinds of players, but because he had that previous relationship with the club, he's not been playing a lot. We're able to get him. I'm excited. Um, I'm hoping he's going to get a lot of game time. And I think he'll lift the club. I think now suddenly no one's safe in that. You know, you have players like Kane, obviously, Mora, um, Son. They all play every week without foul. And, you know, obviously Son and Kane tend to deserve it. But I think having someone like Gareth Bow there, it just keeps you on your toes and you know that you have to hit a new level because suddenly Son and Kane are not the, they're not the biggest fish in the pond now. You've got this guy who's won everything. so A bit of competition. Uh, uh, exactly. So I'm excited, but again, let's do this again in a year and see if it all falls apart. You know? uh, <laughs> so, well, let's I'm, see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> right. Let's fast forward five years. Mm. What is Tottenham's trophy cabinet looking like? Well, it's a beautiful new stadium and a beautiful new training ground. So I'm sure the cabinet is beautiful and it's clean. <laughs> I think it's a, what's in it. What's, what's in, in it? it? <laughs> well, we did win the Audi Cup a few years ago, and I think we get to keep that one. There you go. Um, five years. Let's see. Well, Mourinho's won. What's he won? There'll be something in it. It's not going to be lots. <laughs> There'll be a Carabao Cup or. Europa League, or maybe that thing. What is it they're doing next season with the? If you win the League Cup, you, there's a new European something oh, yeah. or other. Isn't? Maybe we'll get that. Um, oh, God, this is. <laughs> I want to be confident, but you know something. And then yeah, two tro- There'll be two trophies in there. Five. No, it's, no, it's not very. <laughs> there'll be four Premier League titles in there. No. Well, we can go with that. That's fine. Well, Again, I'll do. We'll I'll give you up. four answers and just edit in whatever <laughs> one's going to be. I don't know. Hopefully, a couple of something domestic and something European would be good. I'll take anything. I'm loving I'll this internal anything. battle. You're this is having when you me. ask my questions about my inner voice for the crit. This yeah. is how it works. We're, I we're just kind it. of start fighting myself. <laughs> so yeah, you ask me about Spurs and trophies. It's traumatic. You know. I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's lovely to speak to you and best of luck with all of your work and uh, we'll see what happens with Spurs and we are definitely going to catch up. Yeah, cool. We'll do it again. All right, thanks.